Good day. Recently, a major law firm collapsed, dissolved. The law firm was Heller Ehrman. Now, how could banking institutions that have been around for in excess of 100 years collapse in a matter of hours? Likewise, how could a law firm that had been in existence for over 118 years just merely fall apart in a matter of weeks? Well, for the law firm, there's a number of reasons, at least those reasons that are being expressed in the public airwaves. First, the law firm increased the number of offices that it was having. They wanted to expand. They also increased the number of practice areas. Expansion can be expensive. And if you're not prepared to finance it properly and you don't get the results that you expect, you get disaster. In addition to the increased number of offices, Heller Ehrman had more than 60% of its revenue tied up in litigation. The matters that settled represented about 25% of their total revenue. That meant that 15% of their entire practice, staff, lawyers, personnel were now idle, and they had no new business quickly enough to fill that up. Profits sagged. There was a wave of partner defections, and several merger attempts failed. Now, what do these things teach us? What can we, folks who are outside of Heller Ehrman, take away from what happened to them? Well, first of all, expansion is always expensive. You have personnel. You have real estate. You have all that goes with it. And God forbid you should be successful. Now you have increased accounts receivable. Few law firms are on a cash and carry basis. That means with increased accounts receivable, you have fewer dollars to pay the ongoing expenses. And your vendors, and they expect to get paid weekly, biweekly, or monthly. That doesn't stop despite the fact that clients are slow to pay. Very few law firms are so alert to the issue of collection of accounts receivables that they have cash coming in at the same time that expenses are incurred. So with the increase of success come greater strains on cash flow. Thus, in planning for expansion, be alert. Be alert to the increased overhead and more importantly, be alert to the increased accounts receivable and the need to pay attention to the collection agenda. Next, partner defections today are commonplace. Loyalty is no longer a matter of, of right. It's no longer something that we anticipate. The concept of free agency seems to be prevalent. General counsel and headhunters frequently raid law firms to get the best of the crop to come work elsewhere. Free agency, as you know from sports, is the transfer of talent to the highest bidder. Another issue that impacted Heller Ehrman is the idea that they had so much of their business tied up in so little. A rule of thumb that I learned from my dad many years ago is that any time you have any single client, or in this case, any single practice area, tying up more than 10% of your revenue, you are at risk. Be careful. If you're going to do that, if you're going to extend yourself beyond this 10% rule, do it consciously, and don't make any financial decisions that will impact you negatively should that 10% uh, client or 20% client uh, disappear for whatever reason. There was, I'm sure, a tipping point in the Heller Ehrman scenario. That tipping point is known only to the insiders. But at the time that that tipping point uh, occurred, the ability of the firm to create a merger with another law firm evaporated. There is a smell test, what I call a smell test, and at the Outside of that tipping point, people recognize that the firm is in trouble. And when a firm is in trouble, they're not a very good merger candidate. 
Other firms should learn the lessons of the business of law and take to heart seriously what happened at Heller and learn from them. Thanks for joining us today.